Well, hello everybody. Um, today we're going to get started with Crystal Structure Visualization. Um, so we're going to be using a package called Crystal Maker X. And so this is available from crystalmaker.com. Um, so Crystal Maker is a company based from Oxford, um, a small team of crystallographers, and they developed this software. Um, it's really fast and it can produce some really sophisticated um, visualizations. So the company itself develops three pieces of software, um, Crystal Maker, Crystal Diffract, and Single Crystal. So the first is related just to the visualization side, and the other two are related to refining um, crystal structures from measurements. And our department actually pays for a site license covering all of those three packages. But today we're going to focus just on the visualization side. So I click on Crystal Maker, it brings me through here, um, the front page just tells you about all of the things it can do. So many different types of fancy visualization to look at atoms, um, to look at the electron density associated with crystals, and a range of different features. So reading in from inputs from many different other packages and the ability to modify the structures. Okay. Um, there's also a range of video tutorials to do different tasks. So if you want to create a domain boundary, if you want to show lattice planes, for example, and they may be useful when you start to get comfortable using the package. But for today, we just want to go to download and you have a choice here to download a version of the code for Windows or for Mac. So whichever system you have, you download the package. When you first open it, it will prompt you um, to enter a license code and I should have given you a license code at the end of my first lecture. Um, if not, you can still open the package, but it runs in demonstration mode. So you're limited to some of, some of the functionality. It'll probably have a watermark. So when you do have access to the license code, it's best to put it in. Um, okay, so I've already installed the package. So I'm going to click on it in my toolbar. And when you first open the package, it usually brings up the collections panel. So this is a range of different structures that the developers have found interesting. And it's a really good place to see the range of structures that occur in material science. So both for inorganic systems like minerals and organic systems, including proteins. Um, as well as having sort of individual systems, they're also showcasing the power of Crystal Maker. So you can see examples of dislocation loops, of interface structures. And I'm just going to show you one example, um, which is of a metal organic framework. So a crystal built from organic and inorganic building blocks. So I'm going to open up MOP5. Okay. And here is the crystal structure of MA5. So this is one of the prototype metal organic frameworks, which was um, synthesized and characterized by the group of Omar Yagi, who's now at UC Berkeley. And you can see it's a very interesting structure. So you have one building block that's based on benzene with two carboxylates. And then you have another building block that's based on these tet tetrahedra of zinc oxide. And you can see they're all connected in quite a special way. So the central sphere is just showing the cavity inside the crystal. So these are known as very high internal surface area materials, which makes them useful for gas storage and catalysis. But you can see the software enables you to rotate. Um, you can also perform tasks like checking bond lengths. So if I want to know the distance between this carbon and this carbon, it's 1.493. Um, I could label this bond. And from the top toolbar, I can do many things. I can orient along a particular direction. So if I look along the C-axis, the crystal looks like this. I could spin it, which gives you a good idea on the three-dimensional sort of nature of the structure. Okay, and in the inspector is where you can control 
all of the visualization settings. So here it's giving me a little summary. So telling me the chemical composition and where they got the structure from. The second tab um, shows me all of the atoms present in the system. So I can change their color. I can change the radius. So if I want to change hydrogens to be green, and for some reason, I want the hydrogens really, really large. So two angstroms. Now suddenly you can see all the hydrogens in the crystal. Maybe I want to make all the carbons invisible. There we go. So if you have a very complex structure, you can use these visualization tricks to simplify and help understand it a little bit more. So the third tab tells me about bonds. So maybe I don't want, I want to have a particular type of bond representation, so dots instead of um, cylinders. Whoops. Um, the fourth, well, we're going to cover lattice planes in, in a couple of lectures time, so we won't do that today. Um, here we have the unit cell representation. So here the unit cell is represented as a solid black line, but maybe I want it dotted and I would like it to be pink and I'd like it much larger. And if I go to rotate, now we can see we have um, the unit cell represented by the dotted pink lines. Uh, anything else? The final one is the visualization details. So maybe I want to change the background to be black or white or yellow. Um, but you can also play around with so many different features to get a, to get the um, optimal image, I guess, depending what you're interested in. You can have many different lighting sources um, from different directions. You can control the intensity of the light. You can have depth fading. So if you have a very large structure, that it starts to fade towards the back. And um, you can change from perspective views to, oh, that's not perspective. Yeah, you can change the perspective, again, to give you a feeling of the 3D nature in a 2D image. And if you have 3D glasses, you can also create a 3D um, stereogram, which is pretty neat. And then when you've finally sort of constructed the image that you want, then you simply go to File, and Export Graphics, 2D Graphics, and then you can choose different image types. So PNG is a very common file format. And then this magnification tab chooses how large the image is. So if you want something to look good in a document, usually you'll need about one to 2,000 pixels. Um, for dimensions. If you go to the high end and you have 20,000 pixels, so that's going to be high enough resolution that you could actually um, have a poster on the side of a bus. So this is producing something really high quality. Okay, so that's for just playing around with one structure. But in the first class, what we covered was lattice types. Um, so there's actually a whole section on teaching. And in teaching, you can see things like the radii of elements, uh, which is quite fun, different structure types, which we will cover um, later in the course. But what I'm interested in now is just one more example, which is lattice types. So here we have example, example um, structure files for the 14 Brave lattices. So you have a chance to interact with each one to understand, understand them a little bit better. So I'm going to open up a cubic F lattice, so the face-centered cubic. And here we go. So this is a unit cell of a face-centered cubic lattice. So if you rotate it too much, you want to get it back to a nice orientation. I can just click Orient, click A, and it puts it through the A axis. So what I can do here, I can measure angles. So let's see what the angle is between these three atoms. 60, really. Oh, <laughs> that's because of the, yeah, the 3D nature. Um, I think I was expecting more 90. So if I choose the, the, the corners, 
voila. So there we go. It's at 90 degrees. Um, you can play around. You can measure many distances. Oh, what did I do? Oh, I'm still on angles. Distance, atom one, atom two. There we go, 3.5 angstroms. But in this case, so, okay, this is the face-centered cubic lattice. So you can sort of see you have lattice points at the corners and lattice points at the center of each face. So that's sort of a typical unit cell. Just in this case, to visualize, instead of being lattice points, they're actually silicon atoms in this case, but it doesn't make a difference. But what you might want to do is understand how this structure, or how this unit cell forms an extended structure. So if I click on range, I can now expand the number of unit cells. So in three dimensions, we're taking that building block and we're expanding it along each direction. And suddenly now we see, I'm going to orient along A. Okay. Choose the magnifying glass. And here I've zoomed in. So you can see how this building block um, reconstructs the full sort of lattice of points. I could then rotate and you can see at particular angles you get alignment of the lattice points and that's going to become actually really important for diffraction so how we characterize these structures so at particular angles you get very nice alignment but that's going to come a little bit later um, what else can I show you so we'll go back to a nice orientation so we can see individual unit cell but maybe what you want is to see all of the unit cells. So if I go back to this fourth tab and I click multiple cells, suddenly now it's showing every repeating unit cell of the system. And then you can see how the lattice points are shared between neighboring unit cells. So the atoms at a face are shared between one cell on the left and one cell at the right. Um, and yeah. I think that's basically it. So you can open up each lattice type, have a play around, and just so you're comfortable with what they're actually representing. And it's all about having some fun. So I hope that's gotten you started with Crystal Maker. Um, you can spend hours looking at all of these various structures um, in the examples, but really for this week, just have a look at the lattice types, get comfortable, and then later in the course, we're going to play around with everything else. Um, so thanks for your attention.